my name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, guys, um, I wanted to hop on here and give you a review of a series to date. So I should be clear that the series is not over, but I have now caught up with the series. And I felt like I wanted to talk to you guys about Monstrous, the first three volumes, um, which were published in 2016, 17, and 18. So I think we can probably expect the next edition, I think probably like in the fall. And this is a graphic novel series that is, I would probably describe it as Art Nouveau silk punk with like a lot of animistic magic system to it. It's not said in, I, I say silk punk, I only mean because I think that there's a lot of like kind of Asian influence here in terms of the drawing style and in terms of some of the elements of the world building um, as opposed to steampunk, I would probably put it closer to silk punk, but it is in its own distinct fantasy world. Like it's not like a thinly disguised version of Asia or anything. Um, and it's following our heroine, Micah Halfwolf, who when we start off the books we see is in a very pivotal moment in her life. She's sort of coming into her own. The kind of one of the first images we have of her is kind of nude and um, standing where a bunch of people can kind of inspect her. See like this and we see that she uh, has an amputated limb. She has this interesting sort of like eye, vertical eye thing on her chest. And quickly we find out that there's, she's sort of being sold as a slave um, because she's a part of this race of sort of half breed gods. So people like uh, creatures who are descended from these basically walking, talking, magical animals. <laughs> so they're like half human, half animal, like magical animal. And some of them look more animalistic than others. And she has been being sold because of that lineage that she has to this group of humans who wants to basically experiment on her. And from there, we find out that she maybe is holding more of the power than the humans had reckoned. And she sort of is having this moment of coming into her own on this sort of geopolitical stage of this world. So um, all these kind of factions who maybe kind of knew about her or definitely knew about her mom and her grandma start finding out that she is kind of coming into this special power or special situation that makes her really dangerous. So. It's called Monstrous because Micah, bitch is brutal. Like she, it, these stories are a lot about her kind of reckoning with her really dark side. So um, I'm gonna, I wanna kind of get into a few spoilers here to get into what I really like about this book. But before I do that, like just to give people kind of a high level review of the series to date, I do think that the first book the first installment, which is called, I think, The Awakening, um, it starts a little slow. The pacing is kind of weird. And the other thing I had to get used to is that one thing I don't tend to love about some of the sort of like manga-esque drawing styles of graphic novels is that I do feel like it really sexualizes women. Like it's very male gazy in a way that I'm not comfortable with. And at first that's what I thought this was doing. Um, both of the uh, authors, the, both the author and the illustrator, are women. So I was sort of like, okay, I want to sit with this and figure out what it is that they're doing. And I think that they definitely are using that style to subvert kind of some of the traditional, like what I perceive as pretty misogynistic tropes in a lot of graphic novels or a lot of manga um, that have kind of put me off. I, I, I read some when I was in middle school and high school, and it just really after a while graded on me and I couldn't deal with it anymore. Um, so this is me kind of coming back into graphic novels a little bit more. And um, I was I've, I think that it is interesting to see what they do with that style. So that is also an issue for you. Just know that I don't think that's really, it, it ultimately I don't think is really a male gaze issue. I think that this is an incredibly female centered fantasy universe. Like there's actually very few male characters of note in this at all. And I think that this is very much about kind of female power and female rage. So don't let that put you off. Also don't let the pacing in the beginning of this first one put you off. Um, and finally, I would also say that there is a pretty steep learning curve in terms of the world in this series. So in the first novel, or the first bind up rather, I did spend a lot of the book trying to figure out if I was missing something, but I guess I would just tell people like, you're probably not missing anything. It's just an incredibly detailed world and there is no hand holding, like no spoon feeding, no <laughs> real help for you as you're trying to kind of get into it. So if that bothers you, maybe this won't be for you, but I actually find it ultimately really exciting because 
since you don't have a fur like a full picture in your mind of what the full history of this world is or kind of like what's going on in terms of who's who's with who what are the different groups and their kind of relationship to each other i find that it actually is really exciting because in any one given point you aren't totally sure what's going to happen and i think i've ended up giving each of these individual volumes four stars but part of why i wanted to hop on here and kind of tell you guys and just give a quick series review is i think what i'm finding is that the individual bind ups are not as great as the whole. So like when I think about where we started in Awakening versus where we're at by the end of Haven, like it's a really exciting arc. There's so many interesting things going on. Any one of the characters feels like they could have their entire own story happening apart from Micah. And I think that that's really a great sign of amazing characters and really thoughtful world building. I think I would be really interested because, you know, I read a lot of fantasy, but I wouldn't consider myself to be a really critical fantasy reader in terms of um, I just need enough of the world to sell me on it. I'm not somebody who's sitting there reading for uh, a lot of inconsistencies unless it's sort of foisted upon me by the narrative. Like if there's plot holes that are like glaring, then it will bother me. But I'm not somebody who like goes back and like can tell you all of the plot holes in Harry Potter, for example, in terms of the world building. That's just like not where my primary interest in a fantasy book lies. But I would be really interested to hear more from um, like I'm thinking of my friend Leanna at Leanna's library. I would be interested to hear like her take on the world building here because to me, I think that it's really detailed and really interesting and feels real. Like it feels like it's not simplistic and you can't just easily kind of explain it to someone. So that to me is part of what sells me on it of just like, it feels like the authors could tell you an entire history of like this one character's race, but it's never like super present in the narrative until it needs to be. So I don't know. Anyway, I guess that's just a long way of saying I think that the world building is really compelling. I would be interested to hear from people who are maybe more uh, critical high fantasy readers um, kind of give their take on things. But to me, I think it works really well. And again, like I said, I just wanted to I wanted to give a review sort of of the series since I'm now caught up and I plan to stay caught up um, until something just really goes off the rails here, because I do think that this is something that really rewards like it definitely merits being a series, if that makes sense. Like this isn't something where, you're, where you'll read the first one and be like, okay, this is enough. This is a series that really like hooks you in and it has a really compelling kind of overall narrative thrust in terms of feeling like it has a real arc, it's going places. Each of these bind ups have their own little like micro arcs and micro plots and kind of like side quest things. But I feel like the pacing, once you get f past the first sort of third of the first book, is really consistent. And even if you're not totally sure where it is we're going, like, I still can't fully tell you what it is Micah is trying to get done. Like, I couldn't really tell you <laughs> what her goal is overall. But I feel like I have enough hints about where it might be going that I'm interested. And I think that she is not even totally sure sometimes really what she's trying to do other than like stay alive and figure out what the fuck is going on with her. So um, anyway, I guess I'm kind of rambling and now I wanna segue into some spoilery thoughts, but all that to say, like I said, I gave each of these volumes a four star and as a whole, I would give the series to date a 4.5. This is like one of my very favorite graphic novels I've ever tried to read. I'm really into it. I'm really into it as a series and I'm excited to have a graphic novel series I'm keeping up with. So all that being said, I did wanna get into a couple of spoilery things. So if you wanna hear that, Stay tuned. There, these books, I think what really, sorry, I'm tired of holding them up, so I'm just gonna hold up the one. Oh, also, no, I'm gonna hold up this one because Little Fox is my actual heart. And at the end of Haven, when she's like MIA, I'm so worried about her. Like, I just love her so much. She is like, it, I think that's a really smart choice on the author's part to have like sort of this really good, very unmorally ambiguous character in contrast to Micah. So good job there, I think, and kind of building out the little core traveling team right now. Um, anyway, some kind of spoilery things I wanted to bring up. Part the first, I think when, when this series went from like, I'm interested and I want to keep reading in the first book to like, I'm sold on this was all the stuff, I guess it would be in the second one, all the stuff with Micah's mom in the second book where in the first book you kind of, I mean, you just assume if somebody has like a dead mom who like 
maybe died tragically, then a part of what her mission might be is to avenge her. And I just loved in this second book how complicated Micah's relationship is with her mother. Like, it's very clear from this book how much her mother, like, really looked at her as a tool and, like, used her. But, like, Micah has very complicated relationships that, obviously, as any child would to her mom. And... Yeah, I just thought, like, that was really what hooked me in when I was like, oh, this is going really interesting places. The other thing that I'm really intrigued about right now is at the end of the first book, when we find out that the Baroness who was trying to kill her is the woman that I thought was just her friend, but I think by the third book it's pretty clear is her lover. I, like, I thought that was a really interesting point. Like, I thought that that might be where it was going, but I continue to be very intrigued because in the third book, sorry, I'm just like, passing all these around in the third book we start getting a little bit more context to what their relationship was but I still am not totally clear on like what happened when they were in slavery and why Micah doesn't know I think her name is Tulia I, I'm confused why she doesn't know who she really is I find that really intriguing especially now that Tulia looks like is gonna get in a political marriage with her aunt that's interesting to me I really love the play between Micah and the monster. I, d I never remember what this thing's name is, but like, I think that that's, it's just such a, um, maybe on the nose, but compelling metaphor for female rage that I find fascinating. And this idea of like, is Micah the monster or is it the monster inside of her? And it's a little bit of both. Like, I think thematically that is so interesting. Speaking of female rage, like just the fact that so many of these characters are women and most of them are like very violent, like warlords or like queens or whatever, I think is really compelling. I love all the religion stuff going on here with the Mother Superior and this idea that there's other women who have these gods inside of them, but that Micah is the only one who kind of can do that without being lost to the monster totally. Um, I think is really interesting. And again, if you kind of look at it as maybe a metaphor for like female anger, I think that makes it even more compelling. Um, I'm fascinated about what's going to happen with the shaman empress. Like the more we learn about her, the more interested I am in it. And especially like the monster calls her the beloved. And again, I'm just sort of going on this assumption that this is meant to be sort of a, a something about women's anger and this idea of like, having the embodiment of your anger be your consort and I'm also wondering who who is Micah's dad and like how did the shaman empress like is the monster the lover of the shaman empress to give her children like are the is is Micah a descendant of this guy I can't tell <laughs> um and I like that like I like how ambiguous all of that is and like I'm excited I think that you get enough payoff and enough sort of like clues about what's happening that it doesn't feel frustrating to me all these questions like it's just interesting and it's also entirely possible I would probably like to reread this before I read the next one um I'd like to reread the series just because it's so so much is going on and there's so much detail happening that I'm not I'm never totally sure that I've not just missed something. So it'd be probably good for me to go back and reread this and see if I'm just missing some things. But all that to say, guys, like if you've been reading along, let me know if they're like what you're most interested in seeing what happens next. But I thought that Haven, um, which is the most recent one that I've read, really just cemented to me that this is a this is an interesting series that is asking interesting questions, has interesting metaphors happening, um, the world building, like everything about this is intriguing. And I'm just so excited to see what happens next. Oh, and also if we have I not talked about the art yet, because the art could not be more beautiful. I mean, like, the, some of the spreads in here, I just find like kind of hauntingly beautiful, I should probably look because there's some of these that I, I looked at and was like, I would love to have that just as like, a piece of art on my wall. There was one spread I remember from this um, first one that I just, yeah, like just the silhouette of that I think is beautiful. The character design, like all the art deco details um, alongside these like really horrific um, images of violence are fascinating. There is uh, one character who gets introduced in the third one and her introductory spread. I just love the character design. She's a She's one of the um, one of the creatures. I can never remember what they're called. I think they're called Arcanics, and she's the descendant of like a deer 
magical animal. So she has these horns that I think is just beautiful. Ugh. The art alone, I feel like is worth the price of admission, just looking at how beautifully everything is drawn. So yeah, that is sort of my review of the series to date. Um, I feel a little out of my element here because I'm definitely not like an aficionado of graphic novels by any stretch of the imagination, but I've really been enjoying this. Um, and again, I, and I'm also not like, I like epic fantasy. I definitely read it like high fantasy, but it's not like my expertise. Like I don't feel like, you know, I can speak authoritatively about how unique or not unique this is, but it feels unique to me based on kind of the comments I see in the bookish community. It feels like other fantasy readers feel like this is a pretty unique series. And I definitely feel like it's well worth your time, even if you just get it from the library, if you don't want to have to keep up with all the, um, the series as they come out. I find these frustrating to store, but that's a side note. Um, anyway, all that to say, I definitely feel like this is worth the hype because it is a very hyped graphic novel series here on YouTube. I feel like it really warrants the excitement people have for it. I think it's really interesting, compelling. I don't know what's going to happen next, and I find that really compelling and exciting. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Monstrous. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. Let me know if you've read Monstrous or are planning to read it. And um, I think that that will do it. I hope you guys are having a really lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.